of Land and Natural Resources on November 10, 2011, and from, the gov and from Governor Abercrombie on June 12, 2012. Notice of public hearing appeared on February 17, 2013, in the Saturday editions of the Honolulu Star Advertiser, the Garden Island, the Maui News, West Hawaii Today, and Hawaii Tribune Herald, meeting the legal requirement of publication 30 days in advance of the public hearing. In addition, notice of the public hearing was posted on the websites of the Lieutenant Governor's Office, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and the Division of Forestry and Law. In conduct of this hearing, in the conduct of this hearing, we will proceed as follows. Um, this public hearing is not to exceed two hours any at 8 p.m. First, there will be a short informational presentation on the proposed rule. After the informational presentation, I will ask anyone if anyone has questions regarding the presentation before giving their testimony. <coughs> we will limit the questions to three minutes per speaker to ensure everyone has an opportunity to ask questions. Next, I will call on those who signed the list and testify. After these persons have presented their testimonies, if we have time, I will proceed to any additional questions and then open up the floor to anyone else who wishes to speak. We will limit the testimony to three minutes per speaker to ensure everyone has an opportunity to provide testimony. Please keep your statements brief and on the subject to allow others an opportunity to testify. You may submit additional testimony in writing on or before April 19, 2013 to the Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Forestry and Water. Uh, at 1151 Punchbowl Street, room 325, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96813. And we'll post that address on the end of the presentation, so you guys will be able to write down. Is it also written in here somewhere? This date and address are also available in the hearing notice. Uh, when given the floor, please speak into the microphone. Oh, we don't even have a microphone. So if you want, uh, we can set up the microphone real fast, but I think the room is small enough, but you can just... Um, Speak for you guys can hear everybody, right? Um, please present your name and comments clearly. We ask that you do this because we're recording the hearing to prepare the minutes. Please be reminded that this is not a courtroom or adversarial type proceeding, but a public hearing to gather testimony. Thus, cross-examination or party-to-party -party rebuttals will not be allowed. If you have a question, please direct your questions to me. We expect that there may be differing opinions and we respect it. We want to hear so that we can understand everyone's concerns and viewpoints. Uh, are there any questions about the format of this meeting? Yes, uh, as far as this meeting is concerned, uh, is there a quantum as far as the amount of people on the board who help support or address this issue? When it goes to the board for voting. Thank you. Uh, copies of the proposed rules are available at the door. Please feel free to take a copy. The proposed rules are also available online at hawaii.gov slash dlnr slash rules. Uh, so we'll proceed. Uh, I'll do a quick PowerPoint of the proposed amendments to the rules. And keep in mind that the rules that are, um, are changed are listed in this document that was available there. Um, they're all underlined. Some of the underlined rules are actually rules that have been moved around within the document to better organize it. So um, just because it's underlined, it doesn't mean it's a new rule or it's a change. <coughs> So this, actually this summary, what it, will, what it will go over is it will go over the main points of the rule change that we're looking at and some of the changes in the definitions. Um, so the first, um, the reason for this proposed amendment is to prohibit transport and recently introduced wildlife. And you know, this, this new amendment to the rule is mainly to protect the natural resources that we have around. So moving around species that are known to have negative impacts on Hawaii's environment, something that we want to um, stop from happening. Um, in order to protect indigenous species, damage to watersheds, spread of pathogen and diseases, and strip the um, so The intention is also to prevent the spread of harmful non-native wildlife species. Um, it is not intended to regulate commerce, agricultural, agriculture, domestic pets, dead game animals, or research. Um, 
purpose of the proposed amendments, add and amend relevant definitions, provide seizure and forfeiture provisions, update exhibits of endangered species, injurious species, and wild bird. So as you note, as I noted earlier, part of the, the rule change is also to organize and make this rule easier to read. Definition. So the first change in definition is to uh, Title 13, 124-2, amend definition of injurious. Oh, okay, prohibited activity. The first one is 13, 124-3. So prohibited activity. With respect to introduce wildlife, no person shall or attempt to transport and release such species unless authorized by a permit issued by the board or its authorized representative, the Department of Agriculture or the Department of Health. Um, it also lists below the penalty. Do you guys, can you guys all see this? Okay. It should be, yeah, it should be listed here. Um, you can follow along using the, the title and the section. Mm -hmm. in here. So it should be on page. Yeah, yeah. I got one question already. How come this doesn't have that original purpose that you had up there? There's a different purpose in here. Uh, you know, 13-124-1, and it's not the same purpose that you had there. Yeah, I saw that online somewhere, but not on this one. I've been asking the important thing. Okay, so no, let's, let's save the question for after the presentation. We'll have a second purpose. Right that's part of the whole thing right there. We don't have this, you guys don't even know what the purpose is. You just yeah. flash the purpose up there and it's not here. So these are the purposes of this presentation and today's hearing. The purpose in the rule is the purpose of the admin rules. So they're two different purposes. And that's what I want to know why we're here. The purpose of why we're here. How can we be different? Because one is the purpose for this meeting and the other is the purpose for the rules to exist in the first place. Wow, look at here, back here. Sorry, I said the one is the purpose for tonight's meeting, and the other is the purpose for the rules to exist. So um, again, chapter uh, title thirteen, chapter one twenty four two. Definitions. Um, defining introduce as an act of releasing wildlife into a habitat in which is not indigenous. Define release to free an animal from effective confinement or restraint. Amend definition of introduced wildlife to read as any wildlife introduced or imported to Hawaii by humans. Um, next section 13, 124.2, amending of definitions. Amend definition of injurious to read as any species or subspecies of animal except where otherwise except where specified otherwise by rule or permitted by the Department of Agriculture as conditionally approved, which is known to be harmful to agriculture, aquaculture, indigenous wildlife or plants, or constitute a nuisance or health hazard as is listed in the exhibit entitled Exhibit 5, Chapter 13, 124, list of, of list of species of injurious wildlife in Hawaii and as updated, which is located at the end of this chapter and incorporated by reference, and as established and designated by the board as injurious wildlife. Um, another definition under 13.124.2, amend the definition of wildlife to read as any member of any non-domesticated species of the animal kingdom, and game mammals and game birds living in a wild and non-domesticated state. Whether reared in captivity or not, including any mammal, fish, bird, amphibian, reptile, mollusk, crustacean, arthropod, or other invertebrate, and include any part, product, egg, or offspring thereof, or the dead body parts thereof. So another portion of this rule change is, is to add um, species to the list of endangered species. We have um, some species listed here. We also are removing species from the list of endangered species and changing to the list of threatened species. Mm -hmm. This is just a name change for this. And this is to mirror um, the, federal, the federal rules and the federal law. Um, okay, uh, next part is uh, proposed amendments are additions to the list of injurious species that are birds. So we listed some uh, families of species of birds that we were that we wanted to add to the injury species. So there's a list of them here. And I think they're also in Okay. Um, 
more additions to the list of injury species, more birds. And then additions to the list of injury species, amphibians and reptiles. Um, additions to the list of injury species in vertebrate. Oh, you guys want me to read it? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll go over. Uh, so adi additions to the list of injury species in vertebrates <coughs> is the little fire ant, red imported fire ant, Africanized honeybee, Asian honeybee, nettle caterpillar, small hive beetle, coffee berry borer, aurora mite. Additions to the list of injury species, mammals, small Indian mongoose, even toed ungulates, except for game mammals. Additions to list of introduced wild birds, red-crowned Amazon, mitrid, canoer, red mass, canoer. So the, those are the, all the proposed amendments in summary. Um, I just read in the uh, this is the, the address for written testimony that you wish to submit um, you know, on this screen. Excuse me. In an email with uh, uh, with uh, Lauren, she indicated that uh, you could also send an email to her, but it's not listed there. Yes, it's not listed here. Yeah, you can. You can email me testimony as well, and we can put my name out Okay, now that we have explained what is being proposed, we'd like to proceed to getting your comments and testimony. Um, does I'm anyone have any questions on the presentation before giving their testimony? Yes, I want to make a statement about what I'm seeing here. Can you um, come up and just state your name yeah. for the record? Okay. I don't want to be confused with the time I'm going to testify. Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, I could do it right here, right? Yeah. My name is Harry Ferguson, Jr. Um, one of the things I want to note here that I, I have, I take offense to the fact that this meeting has been delegated to you guys who don't understand some of the processes. Just by the way you read it, you can tell me that you're new to having these hearings. Okay, and I find that very offensive because this has a great impact on the public. And there are going to be, there's some questions that need to be asked that you're not, not even close to be prepared to understand. And so I find it offensive that a board member is not in the room having this meeting that can answer some of these basic questions. Although you're doing a very good job, it's very clear that this is new to you. And it's a very hard way to have a public hearing. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions about the presentation? Um, yeah, if we could have you guys either stand up so everybody can hear your question or say it louder. Um, we'll do first. Just state your name. Glad you're wrong. I'm sure everybody in the room can hear me. First of all, what is your uh, name? Jason Misaki. Jason, okay. Basically, there was a governor's uh, approval on the June the 12th, uh, 2012. Right? Yeah. When you go out to rulemaking, you're under Administrative Directive 0901, which you have Hawaii Revised Statute 91 embedded in that directive. You said, that the land board approved um, the amendment went out uh, on November 10, 2011, correct? Yes. Then why is it that the governor's approval states November 10, 2012? There is a flaw in this governor's approval. I got it highlighted. Would you like, would you look at your own copy? Yeah. Secondly, I got the small business um, regulatory um, from uh, former um, chairperson Sharon Pang on March 5th, basically saying there is no impact to small businesses. Well, I disagree with that, especially with the pokey frog and all those, um, you know, that, that, that invasive species. 
lot of people over here, I went out to buy citric acid. A lot of people also bought small quantities of rehydrated lime. It does affect small businesses. So I, I'm saying that the Small <coughs> Business Regulatory Review Board under Karen uh, Pang, March 5th, 2012, is in error. But I suggest you look at your governor's approval. You have to make sure everything is dot the I's, cross the T's. I think you should review this. Okay. And Jason Misaki, right? <coughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so let's let's do questions now, and the testimony can be for after the question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. My name is Gary Needham. I'm from Honolulu. And some of those things that you mentioned, yes, by all means, they're not uh, indigenous to Hawaii, but the the, the the gains that we do have came with my ancestors for survival a way of life. Now all of these other ones, like the Oki Frog, we never had nothing to do with that. Those things I feel they should be addressed. But as far as like we are with Pig Hunter, uh, we bought the pig for survival. That was our way of life. Now how can they put restrictions with fences to take away? our indigenous right for survival. Uh, I agree, Koki frogs, I mean, no bottom. <coughs> Honolulu, we don't know that. <coughs> Honolulu, we don't have a lot of things like that. But something tells me that if I don't speak up at this meeting, then Honolulu will get the same problem. Some of the issues here, I believe in some. Sufficient for the people, my ancestors, and a lot of people brought it here so that we can survive. Bob wire fences, we never had that. We had stone walls to keep this out of the. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, can you turn it over? Yes, all that stuff is not. So, Let's, let's try to stick with questions because it's it's not, the testimony goes on a list, yeah? So if you guys have questions about the presentation, we can take the questions now, but if it's testimony, we'll go on the format of the list. So. Yeah, question. Hey, uh, my name's Taylor, yeah? Kavita, born and raised Hilo. You guys saying that the mongoose and all that kind of stuff, the ducks and all that, if you guys get ducks at the state park, you guys get mongoose, you guys brought them here. The rats was, came here from you guys, not us. So I mean, I'm kind of wondering, are you guys admitting to screwing up? What do you, what do you mean by that? Is the state admitting that they wouldn't screw up by bringing all these animals in? No, all it is is adding it as a defined species within the rule. Okay, just wondering. Okay. Yes. Yeah, how's it? Um, my name is Steven. Yeah. <clears throat> I got one question on this meeting tonight. I've been through many public hearings, uh, including aquatics, yeah? And for public testimony. Uh, Nothing was ever done with the public testimony. I mean, they were spent. Yeah. Um, the divisions did what they wanted to do, implemented what they wanted to implement. What are you guys going to do with our testimony tonight and throughout the rest of the meeting? You guys will scrap them and actually, or you guys actually go in <coughs> take what we say into total consideration. So, what are you guys going to do? I mean, I, for one, don't want to waste my time anymore. Yeah. And I don't think anybody else here, we're all working men. We're taking Amen. our time. We're taking our time to come over here for uh, for what you guys want to implement upon the public. So, what are you going to do with our testimony? Um, the process is to take the testimony and look at its relevance towards the rule and see how that testimony is negatively affecting people. So we're going to look at all of the testimony we gathered from the state and then make a decision based on that. And so the, the testimony that we're hearing is is going to be analyzed and looked at. So, and used to make a decision. if yeah. that is the case, are those two cameras the recorder for this meeting for you guys? No, we because have audio. I see no recorder. We have one here. <laughs> that recorder will pick up everything. It should. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yes. Uh, I had a question. You know, in your um, definition yes. of all the. Uh, <clears throat> 
using for the exhibit by including the injurious animals, right? Uh -huh. well, like, We got game, we got mammals, right? Mm -hmm. Even toad ungulates. Could you give us some description of some of these even toad ungulates? We had right a now? discussion too. Um, Josh can talk about yeah, that. It's not bit. everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Straight to you know biology class and say, hey, you know, what do you think of toad ungulates? Well, I can you introduce you at the top of my head. So even toad ungulates are a really big group of animals that includes things like um, pigs, goats, sheep, but because we say except for game mammals, we're going to include those ones. So it's ungulates other than game mammals in Hawaii, basically. But it doesn't include like horses would be odd toed ungulates, because they only have one toe on their hook. So it's basically um, anything with hooves that's got a cleft in it. Um, but game mammals aren't included. Is that going to be included in the exhibit? Or is that going to be a different section as far as what game are considered game animals? Uh, um, yeah, that's so listed in uh, chapter 13, 1, <coughs> which is the game, the rule of game animal. Okay. Yes. 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 A couple of questions. On their injurious wildlife, uh, you guys do that Could you speak thing? up, please, for us deaf people? Okay, Richard. <laughs> I don't even have to look. I know what that is, right? Under injurious wildlife. I see that except game birds and game mammals is, is that being crossed off? Is that being removed from that section? Yes. Oh. So why isn't the uh, accept, why, why is that not being accepted? So is our game mammals going to be included as injurious wildlife now? Somewhere else or hidden something in here? Or? It, it was just to be, so we don't conflict with the game rules that we have. Click the game rules. The game rules specifically list animals for hunting, game birds, game animals. So we took that out and so it, these rules would not conflict with that. Mm, I, I, I don't understand. It kind of sounds like a double talk. Just testify again. Yeah. Easy to wait. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand what, what exactly. What, okay. Well, we didn't want to list game birds and mammals as injurious wildlife because then it would, but it, it says would affect the way we are able to regulate them on the game management side. If we list it as as injurious wildlife, then when it comes to these rules, people can interpret it differently, and they can go on and, and hunt animals differently. Then, th then otherwise regulated by the game law. So you're, you're, you're taking off, you know what I'm saying? I mean, up here it's saying it's exempt, these animals are exempt from being called injurious, but somewhere else now they can deem that this pig is coming on this farm and now it's injurious. Mm, I can yeah. give some backstory on that. The reason that, um, that that was removed from the definition of injurious wildlife is because in the exhibit we have the exemption that says except for game mammals. So we just didn't want to say in the definition except for game mammals and in the exhibit say except for game mammals. It's just kind of a housekeeping thing. So game mammals are still exempted, it doesn't apply to them. Okay, and then on, on uh, release, uh, it means we're treating animals from the effect of climate to restraint. Can you explain what that is? Lauren? Free from effective confinement. <laughs> right now, the way it's written, it could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. So that would be a really good thing to try comments on to see how that can be interpreted. Because it's not really defined yet, and because it's proposed, it hasn't been enforced. We can't done. hear you. Sorry, you were asking <coughs> about the definition of release and how it can be somewhat <coughs> ambiguous. And so that would be a really good thing to comment on because it's unclear on how that could be interpreted. Uh, yes. Yeah, I got some questions. <laughs> with economy and with everything the way it's going today, the government, as far as I'm concerned, taking all the land over here in Hawaii, taking more, more, more birds, birds, birds. When everything ends up, when we cannot have food coming to us and whatnot, we're so lucky we're self sufficient. That we got all these animals. Why don't we don't make them to use? Instead, what we're we gonna do? Eat on Polina bird when the time comes? Don't we don't want food. I'm gonna show them Polina bird on the frying pan. Come on. You know, this has been going on the local people been talking about this for years and nobody listened. Every time you guys get a meeting, it's all about what you guys like to say. The local people are tired of this. That's why a lot of guys don't even come to the meetings already. 
Because it just goes the way you guys complain on. You know? Why don't you listen to the local people, what they're saying? I don't understand this. Why you didn't get meetings? You guys might as well just do what you're going to do anyway. You're up in the mountains killing the wild cattle. People starving all over the world. And you guys get the right, the government get the right to go in there and kill them? We go in there and kill them. We get fined. We get thrown in jail. And it's only for eat. So, where are we going from here? I'd like to know. Well, it, it is a process, and you know it's not perfect. But we are following a specific process that's set forth to change the rules, and so um, that's that's what we're doing, and that's what we're following. Brother, that process is a U.S. process. This is Hawaii. Big, big difference. A lot of space between the foreign country and this. This is our home. We raise our family here, yeah? What? So other guys coming over here telling us what to do. I this is not the United States of America. Yeah. Get that straight. Get that straight. This is Ko Hawaii Pa'aina. And if you don't know what that means, this is from long, long ago. So we don't play with the U.S., yeah? We got to do what we got to do in our time. And we got to take it. You guys come up with a process. When you guys do it, it's a process. When we do it, it's a mistake. And we go to jail for it. You guys know, you all you guys know what we're talking about. We're not over here for nothing. We just came from another meeting. From Kona. That was one, one, one thirty. They had a meeting here this morning. Went to Kona, made another meeting. Came here, make this meeting tonight. You guys... The de facto, you guys making us jump through the hoops. <coughs> you know, the act in 1921, yeah, said rehabilitate, rehabilitate, not alienate a destitute Hawaiian. When the West came here, all Hawaiians, all Hawaiians, whether you rich or poor, became destitute. How come no more Hawaiians run in this program? You're not a one. Mm, you're not a one. Aye. You know, so you know you're not the you're not the injured party. Not you never get cut. All us Hawaiians, we all got cut. So you don't care. You know that sign that guys get on their on their cars. I don't care. They come from non Hawaiians. See the non Hawaiians, when they came here, they never come here for help the Hawaiians. They came here for help themselves. Today at the county council, number one Kanaka on top there. Aye. But we're talking about the Pu'u Honoa. None of them know what Pu'u Honoa means. See your refuge. Rehabilitate. This is what you guys got to remember. We're here to bring our country back. And with you guys in a way, it ain't going to happen. See, ever since the West came here, all Hawaiians, whether you wealthy or not, became destitute. Aye. Became destitute. Yeah? So, Kuhio being who he is, but he's just like you. Huh? Kuhio just like you, just like you, and just like you. Yeah? Follow the money. Show me the money. Yeah, so this, uh, this gathering and this. This system and uh, process and things like you guys call it a program. This with us is a way of life. Life. Aye. Okay. Okaene Kapono. Does it mean the life, uh, the life of the land lived in uh, uh, righteousness? No, it means sovereignty, independence, or ruler. The Bible. Yeah, so you know, I I hate to uh, sound like this, but uh, you know, you like this committee, this this committee, the council is supposed to go on. Number one, Hawaiian on top there. How are you guys gonna know what's culturally sound? That's why, brother. You know, when you get different landlords, this is what happens. You know, when nowadays, 
Flame lock change. Program change. They call it program. Now for ready, you guys. Now, this is a way of life. Life. Yeah. Ha, ro, ha. Ha, ro, ha. The breath of life. Yeah. There's lessons to be learned. Lessons to be learned. Thank you, brothers. You know what you guys gotta do? You guys gotta be away. I am. You gotta be away. <laughs> yeah, no one say you get guys, you get guys say, oh, I'm Hawaiian. You ask them, what is Hawaiian? Uh, uh, uh. Same, same thing all over. And you get guys, you know, he's white as an icebox. He's named Choki. Tony, you heard of uh, identity test? <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> Look at this guy, blue eye, but he's named Choki. Hi. Choki Manaloa. Hey. <laughs> Come on, you guys, come on. And yet you walk around like, oh, man, nothing's going wrong. Yeah. So, uh, the state of Hawaii use kingdom law, but they make rules out of the kingdom law. <laughs> no rule <coughs> supersedes the law. Thank you. And that's the cuckoo of Hawaii. Aye. Thank you. Thank um, you. Are there any other questions about the presentation? If not, uh, we can move. Yeah. Uh, I notice here, my name is uh, Julian Brown. I notice here you say that indi indigenous animals. What do you consider indigenous? As far as how far back do you go? Uh, it's that that language refers specifically to the definition that's in the chapter. So you would have to read. But it doesn't specify. It, it doesn't. And at that point, it's, it's the just, animal itself. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? Deer, sheep, goat, pig. It doesn't identify the animal. So, what animal are you? Are this? Is this the other are talking about? And how far back in our history does it go? That's part of our concern and my concern. You know. So, we kind of need to address that. Yeah. That's yeah, and that's that's something that should be in the testimony so that we can specifically change or um, amend the definition so that it better explains what you want to be. Well, hopefully it is. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, but to add to that, how far is this going? Which, how far is it? Like this whole meeting. All of this was done before <coughs> all of us were even born. That's why it's indigenous. We, our ancestors bought things for survival. Now, you're taking away that survival food besides what we already, the islands went provide. So, and now you say, oh, 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 hey, uh, uh. No, this board is here so that hopefully we can get something going on out of you, one answer that we can agree and understand why this dedication of uh, animals and birds and frogs, we never bring that here. So what about the things that we did bring you up for our survival? Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, everybody has a chance to, to provide testimony. And I have a list here. And there is a process for the list, yeah. So all we want to do is get questions out, and then we'll move to, towards the testimony part. What we don't want is for people to, to not be able to testify, yeah? Well, so my we name is sure. on the list. So we will get to that in the next second. But I just wanted to make sure that there's um, if there's questions about the presentation, you get that done. Um, again, there's going to be a, a chance here, yeah? So anybody else have any other questions about the presentation? Yeah. I just had a question about the process. I mean, the definitions for injurious species, it looks like there's some criteria, and then it also has to be on the injurious species list. So I mean, there's another round of public hearings before you can get added. If we change it, yeah. That's, that's what we're if we change what's on the injurious species list, then it goes to another round of hearings. Yeah. If it's a substantive change. Well, let me ask one question and shut up. What do you guys know about the Axis deal? What do we know about that? What do you know about the Axis deal? Um, you know, I don't know a whole lot about that issue. Oh, come on. Who here? Who here knows anything about the Axis deal? I know a little bit. No, but I'm not asking you. <laughs> <laughs> so, who here knows about, about the Axis deal? Come on. Uh, you know what? For the purposes.
of the meeting, we and we have to. That's right. That's a gift. Why not? That's a gift. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions before we move to testimony? Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, so I have the list right here of persons signed up to do testimony um, on the designation, and we'll call each person to testify in the order listed. Please state your name if you are an individual or if you're representing an organization, and then present your testimony. We'll try to limit it to three minutes because we have a long list of people to testify. So um, please, if you can, um, keep it to that time limit so everybody has a chance. At the end, if we have extra time, we can go over and get anyone that we did not get. Um, so, yeah, and if you could come up to this table so everyone could hear, uh, we would be appreciated. So the first is Richard Hofflinger. My name is Richard Hofflinger. I'm going to just uh, address birds. I'll let somebody else handle the mammals. I direct your attention to 13124-3A1, prohibited activities. No person at uh, prohibited activities is for uh, with respect to indigenous wildlife and introduced wild birds. No person shall catch, possess, injure, kill, or transport any such species. Exhibit 4 <coughs> lists the domestic pigeon as a introduced wild bird. Pigeons are used uh, extensively in dog training, for field trials, pigeon racing. Uh, I think you want to really address that. You're making a lot of us instant criminals. The next one would be 13124-6A. That's uh, permits for keeping introduced wild bird, game birds. It says uh, uh, permits may be issued to qualified persons to maintain introduced wild birds for purposes consistent with the preservation, protection, and conservation of the animal. Again, field trials, shooting preserves. We don't, we kill the birds. We don't keep them for preservation, protection, and conservation. So I think you need to take a look at that one. Uh, the last one is 13124-7A5. The board or its authorized uh, representatives, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's uh, number five. When species of introduced wildlife or injurious wildlife are found to be generally harmful, yada, yada, yada or constituting a threat to human health and safety, the board or its authorized representative may authorize the destruction without requiring permits or reports. DONR is not an aristocracy. Okay? It's an organization that's supposed to serve the people, all the people. The way we know what you're doing is when you report it. Okay? I also want to go back uh, to... 13124-6A, the uh, issuing of permits to qualified persons. What is a qualified person? Where is it defined? If you're going to use that term, you should document where, how it's defined. Otherwise, it's subjective garbage. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next person that we have is Joe Griffins. Can I stay right here? Uh, yeah, if you can speak, as long as you can speak, yeah, I'm going to right here. You know, this is basically, I scrapped this thing, but I really commented a whole lot about this. I'm kind of directing my things to different people in the room. This had a way as well. You know, we've been going through this quite a while. We're getting nothing back. <laughs> All you guys do is come out with more rules. You guys want to take more things. Now you guys get forfeitures in there. What happened to game management? What happened to you guys going back into the forest and taking out the invasive plant? When you guys take 5,000 acres, 10,000 acres, take out the caretaker of the forest that does it for free, what happened to those things? It never comes up. 
All we do is we're going to get hit again. You guys are going to take away. Now going back to the animal, you know, the pig, the goat, the sheep, Uncle Sam, this uncle over here, we talk about it. The substance that came with the Hawaiian people, it was given to the Hawaiian people when they were in power at that time. Hawaiian people are still in power at that time. The animal still belongs to them, but it still belongs to the Hawaiian people. So what are you folks doing about this? Why are we having these meetings? Why are we getting more things taken away from us? Why are things going to be called injurious? It means to cause a harm. You guys can say at any time an animal causes a harm, and you guys can take it. You guys don't have to have any more rules and regs anymore, no more permits. I mean, basically, it's a dictatorship on us guys. What we get left, guys, we lost over 3 million acres on this, on this island already, whether it's public or it's private, and it's adding to it. We're not getting anything back. I don't see anything in you guys' rules and regs that we're getting anything back. We're getting any game management. You guys are doing any programs that's going to put animals back in the forest. You guys are going to re reassess those game management areas and take out the invasive plants and refence it correctly. Your hunter is your true conservationist preservationist. That's who we are. We go through that forest, we look at all the invasive plants. You know, we want a healthy forest. And I'll tell you, the hunter would help you guys if you guys would do it correctly. But all you guys is doing is taking from us. You know, you guys got another, Umakala is coming up here real soon, you guys are gonna take another 5,000 acres. 2,300 acres is adjacent to that on the right road. It's a dead dormant forest. And you guys will come down all the way to tree planting, that's going all the way across, that's in the, that's in the works too. You guys are working on Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa is already landlocked already. We have no place to go. So where is it, guys, that we have something? You guys are giving us nothing. You know, come on. What's happening? You know, what about the kids later on? I'm 50 years old already, and I've had great time hunting. I got a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. What about the kids? They got nothing left. So you guys are sitting in power. You guys should be looking more in those directions. Try to work with us. Try to do something. Don't take, don't just keep taking things away from us. That's all I got to say. I Okay, the next person is Polycapo Deadman. Thank you, Chief. Polycapo Deadman, it really depends on. Uh, I'm against this rulemaking. Uh, the Native Hawaiian uh, had the state in court on issues in the past. Uh, so I realized today that. When you folks deal with poisons or going to deal with sprays, you look at the Department of Health to see if you're violating this, you're using too much of that, or what kind of chemicals. So I don't know why you're not consulting with Hawaiian uh, practitioners or Hawaiian experts in OHA when you start changing rules on how we use traditional and customary practice. It's a state constitution that already is a statue of law that you got to look at to see when you do rulemaking, does it violate or have conflict with these practices? You start changing the definition of how we look at things, and it ends up being very Western when it started with the Hawaiian understanding, and we got the rights to these understandings. So there is laws looking that the state has to protect traditional and customary practice. So when you go around altering the whole idea of how we live, subsistence, naming plants, naming animals with a scientific name and start getting rid of them to whatever means and not using the traditional practice or ignoring that. So I'm saying that it's well overdue that Dale and R should be looking into Hawaiians and their experts when you start making rule changes and changing the definition from the way we look at it. And just can't ignore that law. That's there. So why not go there first so that when you come to these meetings, you already would filter out a lot of this stuff and say we cannot change it because this is customary practice. Right. We're going against customary practice. How can you say that we're supposed to uphold it as a state constitution? Then you hand me on book, tell me I cannot go get. That's called a regulation book. Why not look and say that if you violated my conditions, I should be exempt from this by this regulation book? Because it's against the state constitution. You gotta do your work. I said, I wonder where there's no attorney general here, an AG sitting here that can dialogue with what I'm talking about. 
You know, the same thing. Now you go about third party when he goes down, or are you going to really address that fact that is legitimate and it should be addressed? And next time you go to the next place corner and every place else, that that should be understood. Don't take advantage of the situation that you overthrew. We're a state now. We're Hawaii, and we're Hawaiians. It's our house. And it's sad that we start getting displaced in our house by everybody else except the Hawaiians. Why are we always coming to you, the state? We work hard, we pay taxes, just like everybody else. But the lands that you sit on were Hawaiian lands and ceded lands. And you collect a revenue from that. Every airport, every harbor, you collect money from the lands that was crowned and went to the state. Not you folks, Hawaiian land. So where is that interest? When there is a law that says you gotta check it out. I think that this is invalid, it has a conflict, and you should check it before you come here with an AG to see if you violated all of it. And on this uh, exhibit two, chapter 13, on the back of endangered species, you get the Pueo, and it's only on Oahu. How come the Pueo is not on this island as an endangered owl? But I'll tell you why. Because they use poison to kill the rodents, and the rodents is what the owl eat. There you go. So what? You're doing more damage to the native birds, and you folks do that. You already admit to that. You got employees that do that, set poison out for the rat. And then they what the rat eat, what the foil eat. Then I look and say, it's not on a big island, only on one get out. Come on. Is that one set up? Is that accidental? I see the whole entire, a lot of birds except the owl, only on one get out. But the practice that you do is killing them. That's my statement. Thank you. Go get them. Okay, yeah. yeah, next person we have is Hannah Leigh Ferdstrom. Did I say that right? Sorry. I don't know if I can talk that loud. So, first of all, I want to commend you for trying your best, but this is way out of your league. Like Polycopter stated, you're supposed to have a board member here and an attorney general so you can understand the impact of laws. Okay, so I'm going to try to address what you're doing in a much bigger term, okay? Now, first of all, I want you to know, my father used to work for the DLR. He used to be with forestry and then with uh, Fish and Gate. So I'm very familiar with this project. I was party, along with my father, to introducing all these animals that you're talking about, why you have to kill them now, okay? And I know it was part of the state because I was there. Walk along. The deal in our center, we raised the natives, I moved on. Okay? But what Polycop has said and what was being brought up here is very important because what, what's, that, what's happening here is you guys have gotten way beyond yourself. It's kind of arbitrary and capricious. You guys are tyrannical. You're thinking that somehow or another you're in charge of everything and you have there's no recourse for people. And that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're showing people that there is no recourse. That means you're going to have a battle. Okay, because in case you didn't know it, Hawaiians, the people who actually live here, who come from here, are protected twice in the law, under the 5 f Clause of the Admissions Act and under, under, under Article 12, Section 7 of the State Constitution. You guys got to do your homework. Okay, I, I'm sure you made yourself abreast of this stuff, but this is way out of your league. I know you even feel that because there's so many things going on here. That, that are way beyond the scope of forestry, okay? It has to do with, with, with indigenous rights. And, I, and, and so, let me make myself very clear here. Our indigenous rights come before any of your scientific programs, okay? Which is what you're basing your stuff on, okay? It is interest, it is way preemptive. You guys are doing this stuff, like you said, that could be said here. Where's the Hawaiian consultants? Where's the Hawaiian input here? You're going to sit there and tell me, as a foreigner, how we're going to do our stuff? Okay. okay? And this is very important. We are the Hawaiian practitioners. I'm a Hawaiian priest. So, lono is what I do. That's all about the earth. So everything you guys are doing concerns me. And you'll be seeing a lot of me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, next person is Taylor Sumida. Okay, um, I just get one question, yeah? Um, you guys saying, you know, I read somewhere you guys like increase taxes on us to fund your programs. Um, what are we getting out of it now? We should be paying taxes to have some benefits, you know? And uh, we're not getting nothing. You guys just taking away more land. You know, and even the land you guys already seeded is sinking. The forest is not what it used to be. That's why the lady got lost on the mountain. She cannot see where she's going. Five years ago, maybe you had a chance. Ten years ago, I guarantee you had a chance. Had enough sheep up there that would eat the grass so you can see where you're going. Now no more nothing. So again, we're losing. So what are we paying all these extra taxes for? You know, you guys um, get that Palila program. You know, that's kind of one joke too. And I met with this guy, I remember you, you know? And I brought up some good points. What happened to that? Nothing. We paying all these tax monies and all this kind of stuff you guys trying to take from us. What are we getting in return? Absolutely nothing, but you guys telling us more rules, you know? You guys saying that the mongoose is invasive, you know, and all that kind of stuff, yeah, that's fine. You know what, you guys brought them, not me. I never bring any of that here. So what we did for this tax money? I mean nothing. So what's even the point? That's all. Thank you. Uh, okay, next person is Tony Sylvester. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Tony. Uh, can everybody hear me? I have a, a, a multiple things. I still want to go back to injurious wildlife, only because. You're crossing off except game birds and game mammals in that section. But when I go over to uh, subchapter 2, 13-124-3, uh, uh, section C, with respect to injurious wildlife, except as provided in subsection E, no person shall or attempt to transport and release, release such species. Uh, and you're saying that, that you're taking... Uh, the crossing out except game birds and game mammals from injurious wildlife. Uh, is that still a possibility that our, our, our other wildlife falls under this section now uh, for transport and release, such activities? Is it legal? No person shall or attempt to? I think there's laws already to that, but I, I guess I'm leaning towards if you catch a pig in a trap and you remove it from someone else's property, if you're doing them a favor or whatever, I mean, is that going to be... Is that against the law now as it is? And do we need a permit for that? Uh, right now, you need a hunting license for one. Um, but I don't. it's not against the law now to transport. So this law says it's illegal to transport and release it. So. Yeah. Transport what? Transport and release, yeah, which, which is what the law is regulating. Right so if you catch the, the, the pig in, our, in my ranch, because I don't want it there, and you take this five miles down the road to another guy's place and let you go, He's committed a crime. Yeah. If it's not in confinement when he when it's released uh, into another person's property. You see how in that is. Yeah, but it doesn't specify that. And it says specify transport. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, I get lost in my I get lost in my truck. Transport means transport. So if I'm removing it from said man's ranch and I'm transporting it now and don't care whoever's gonna do this. See the wild pig and the trap in the back of my truck. <laughs> That's part of transport, right? And but it's no person shall or attempt to transport. So I can't even transport it. it no, the the law reads that it's tied together: transport and release. So you can transport them, you just can't release them anywhere. Oh, this is the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then um, my second one, though, actually, this one just bothers me even more. And I think, uh, Richard, you brought this same one up. It's 13-24-7. Uh, I mean, please, I don't understand why the DLNR is getting more power. Uh, when species of introduced wildlife or interest wildlife are found to be generally harmful or destructive to agriculture or aquaculture, native plants or wildlife, or constituting a threat to human health and safety, the board or its authorized representative may authorize the destruction and control of species in an area for a specified time period without requiring permits or reports. You know, I mean, are we talking insects here or is this pigs on a magnet farm or, I mean, this whole section, no way. I cannot see DLNR getting more power to do this kind of stuff. 
I can see if it's an uh, ag inspector with a Christmas tree with insects, but this is just too big, and this is going to kill us. If they can go to anybody's place and just remove animals and kill animals without be recording what they're killing. No way. Absolutely not. Thank you. I don't know my name on the list. I'd like to ask one more thing, please. Uh, sure. If you can keep it quick, because uh, we do have a few more names, but go ahead. I'd like to ask, how much land you guys took already for the birds? Eh? One thing I will tell you, Fred and the Brigham, I work with him, I help them. When they took out all the cattle from in the area, they made them a bird sanctuary, right? The grass is so tall, the birds all move out, and when the cattle say we get the chip and everything. What the hell are these guys talking about bird sanctuaries? The bird don't even hang there already. One turkey will land, even freaking top over all the tall grass. <laughs> they also ran with these guys, all these educated guys. I don't understand that. I just don't understand. And they like more land, more land. It's sick already. You guys taking a whole bloody island already. Stop already with the land. Give the people something already. <coughs> That's what it's about. Give us something. That's why we all come here to the meetings. My God, man. Thank wow. You. Okay. Um, next person on the list is Paul Broatman. Um, my name is Paul Goatman. Um, hope you guys can hear me in the back. Uh, I'm not going to restate some of the things that have been stated already. I'm just going to talk about the, the point that I don't like about this bill over here, all this um, proposed some changes, is uh, the petty misdemeanor section of it. I mean, you already, I mean, you're talking about property forfeiture. So if this person, you know, has their, can have their, truck taken away, could have their firearm taken away. Um, I mean, you're talking anything that was used in the taking of this animal, right? Or transporting of this animal could be taken away from this person. You know, I think you're already exasperating a already delicate situation. I think a lot of these people that, I mean, they need to be poachers, you know, when you guys trample go after. They probably kind of get into the areas already because no more animals to take. And that's why they're in their poaching. You know, they have no money. They over there trying to provide for their family, and you guys just making a bad situation worse. And that's that just my opinion. Um, if you guys really want to do something positive, you need to open up more game areas that people are talking about. You know, do something proactive. All this right here is all reactive. This is just punishing people for a system that's not working right now for the people. And that's all I have to say about Amen. this. Thank you. Um, next we have Jim Albertini. I'm Jim Albertini, representing Maluaina. I'm here to support Polycarpo and all the, all the hunters in their traditional and customary practices. Uh, what I've seen in 30-some years of farming here is that more and more of the forest areas getting restricted and uh, people not being able to feed their families. You guys are on the wrong track, I think, you know. You know, support the Hawaiians, and everybody benefits when you support the Hawaiians. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, J.D. Friday. Hello, I'm J.D. Friday. I live in Hilo, Hawaii. Um, I'd like to speak out in support of the regulations. As I understand it, the main purpose of the regulations is to not bring in new animals and not move new animals around. I'd like to speak up for the forest. The forest didn't grow with these animals. They don't belong in there. Bringing in new kinds of animals, the forest can't handle it. Someone's got to speak up for the forest, and I'd like to speak up for the forest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Steven Aranjo. Uh, anybody else after me? Uh, no, but we do want to open the floor if there are people that haven't signed up, so we still want to stay with that time. If, af if after we give everybody a chance, then we can go again. Can I go again? Yeah. Okay. Hey, my um, name on this, you never call me yet. Oh, what's your, what, what is your name? Jared Needham from Honolulu. Can you call me? Oh, you said no. I, no, you can go after him. Okay, your, thank your you. Stuff says no right here, but you can go after. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's let him go and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is Jared. Okay, go. Yes. Everybody know already. I went for hour already, and and I do agree that the broader this and the broader that. I'm sitting here listening to all of this. My question is that 
the state supposed to maintain the lifestyle in Hawaii. They're not telling us it's that not. they run them. There's no person here that has a title to their property. So that tells me that they don't really own this. I just don't understand how the state supposed to be trustees of this land is now dictating on how we supposed to remember now. They only have to withhold the Hawaiian tradition and represent us. And right now, I do not see that. I'd like to say more, but that's all right now. Thank you very much. I have one more thing before this gentleman starts. Right? Okay, I'm more on a few sorry for you because you just a guinea pig when we're coming. But, um, yeah, man, you know all these rules that they get in here, they're really not going to enforce the rules. Okay, if you get caught really screwing up on a deer came here, yeah, they're going to penalize you. But a lot of these came out because the deer came to the big island. Okay, and back to the fact that I would really like to know what you think of, what you say is indigenous to a wife. What I say is indigenous? What is the um, state? What is the yeah. other What is all this about? And how far back does it yeah. go? You know, that that is up to the yeah. legal definition of it. I, I can't answer that. Yeah, the, the, there should be a definition. And this gentleman here, what he talked about, bringing animals in, and I, I agree with you. Okay, to a certain extent, we cannot just bring animals here and destroy a forest. Being a hunter, I go deep inside the forest and I see the fence area. One thing that we need to do is maintain what the state already took because what chokes out the endangered plants is the Louis Fern. Nobody goes up there and cleans it. They keep taking, no, no maintenance. Okay, the problem is maintenance. How much do they need? If you take 2,000 acres of one forest, and don't maintain it, don't lose friend on choke it. We need to maintain it. We're willing to help, but not if you keep taking, because we can't help somebody that keeps taking from us. And as far as bringing in stray animals, yeah, we're not gonna bring zebras in. You know what I'm saying? Let them go on. But what is here is indigenous. What's in Hawaii? And we need to maintain, yes, I believe in preserving, but you need to preserve what and maintain what you already took. Not, don't keep taking. And that, that's basically what we're trying to say. Yeah? Bottom line. Thank you. Um, okay, so we should have... Oh, okay, yeah, I need to put that in. I'm still working in the front. So what I want to do is we make sure that we get through this list first before we start going, um, people testifying who have already had a chance to testify, yeah? Because I was testimony already, I cannot talk. You can go but after. I tell you, the, the deer, the Japanese girl, they bought the ring neck doll. Okay. Thank you. Oh no no, look at me, I don't want to talk. Okay, uh, next. I had my third. I next had person. my three minutes. Thank you for the three minutes. Next person is Terry Lafayette. Lafayette, that? There you go. I don't know how they just told you to shut up. <laughs> Hi, my name is Terry Knopiani and I'm a representative of the Perry Defense Fund. And um, I would like to just say that I oppose the entire initiative of your amendment. Um, first of all, I, I wanted to remind you of a lot of the things that your, your process. You know, I disagree with your process. You use a process to be able to, to, to alleviate the rights of people like our Hawaiian people and our traditional customary practices. I am a traditional customary practitioner and I have a lot to say because of what we've learned in conservation efforts. We were 100% independent before Western Man came. And we would like to continue to be that way. I'm not sure if you're from Oahu, but Oahu doesn't seem like they have an ideal of subsistence gathering. And so, if anything, I'd like to just say that the process you have and all the amendments you're making is a ploy to be in partnership with the federal government and um, for funding. You know, your, your, your ploy for funding is actually 
desecrating that our religion as you destroy our pigs. Unlets. You give them a definition of unlets. How do you define something that is important to our Hawaiian people? We use a sacrifice, we use a ceremony, and you go ahead and do that. Now you also say that the pigs destroy the forest. I have not seen one one uh, proof or, or anything to our public about how the pigs destroy the forest. And, you know, if you, uh, you know, we're in a litigation suit right now against you, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, for partnershiping with conservationists who seem to be the ones that are defining how our Hawaiian people should live. Conservationists who come up with their own Western ideas of defining who we are and how we decide to go into subsistence gap. Now, I think that's a ploy that you partner. The changing that you're making right now is to increase the sanctions and the penalties to the people so that you can harass them <coughs> like you've done. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with this thing that happened with the federal government, taking some of our hunters, harassing them <coughs> to, to the point where they would go and take them to jail and prison. If, and, and they were called environmentally, environmental terrorists. Now, I don't know if you know that, but with the help of the conservationists, they were able to harass a few hunters and, and take them and arrest them and try to arrest them, but they had nothing to arrest this man. Nothing. So I think what you're doing is increasing sanctions and penalties so that you can continue to harass our hunters to stop them from being subsistence gatherers. And because of that, I really believe you conservationists should ask our Hawaiian people who have been here longer than you have taking care of our resources. My father taught me how to fish. My father taught me how to take care of my family. Now, if anything happened to our barges, we cannot have food. What do you want us to be, dependent on government? That is, that is totally unacceptable <coughs> to our people. That is totally unacceptable to the people that live here on the island who are still subsistence gatherers. And you disrespectfully are trying to, to bully our people and scaring them so that you can come up with permits to go and sanction our people. One person you try to take to prison. Give him, throw away the key for a whole year. He went to a grand jury and was found not guilty. Your ploy for coming up with, with sanctions is partnershiping, partnershiping with conservationists that are trying to get federal monies. Federal money so that you can go ahead and bring it here to the state of Hawaii. And in that ploy, you're giving, you're destroying people. You're destroying our rights as a native people. I don't know about you, but I went to Lanikai, and if you're from Oahu, nobody cares about our Hawaiian people. Nobody cares about who we are. So how do you come up with these decision-making and rules and come to the outer islands and tell us how we should live? I don't see subsistence gatherers on Oahu. Do you? Do you call them unglets on Oahu too? Do you destroy them the way you do here? and you waste the food that my father calls Mina Mina, who never took more than they should have when they ate. They took what they could to feed their families, and they never wasted, like you. To call the kua'a that was used in ceremony by my ancestors, I could, I could prove it to you, that I have genealogy and records that prove that my ancestors used the kua'a as ceremony for sacrifices for their gods. And you come over here and call it an unlit? And call it the destru destruction to our forest? Your conservation efforts by poisoning our rats, poisoning our rats, and this, where does it go? Where does the poison go? Your ploy to come and, and eradicate using poisons that go into the watershed that does do more damage, more damage than a pig stick. So before you come over here and start increasing the sanctions for the people, I really think that you should really think about 
your efforts in the process because it is for love. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have Miles Ione. Ibane. Miles. Good. Okay. Uh, okay, next we have Nani Poglin. Yeah, I was just curious. I know you guys aren't the, really the people that talk that are initiating this. You're just sitting <coughs> here to listen to us. I'm just curious, <clears throat> does any of this matter? Is it going to make a difference if we came here, or are you just going through procedure to let the public talk? Is that how it is? It seems that way to me. Yeah, it is. You've done this many times to no avail. And why is this room so small? Okay. You know this is the hottest place, the most protest, the deal in our nose. Why did they give us this little small and make all these guys stand up who drove yeah. so far to come here to make a difference? And you have a recorder? Is yes. anyone who matters gonna gonna like listen to what we say? And you know, on the um, ballot, the public showed the government they are in support of the hunters. They voted in the hunting commission. That the the majority of the public wants support for the hunters. This is not support for the hunters. This is persecution. And what about all the in, in indigenous animals you guys kill? Way more than any hunters would kill. And way more than any pigs would kill. You know, you re the release the, not the DLNR, the Department of Ag, release the wild control of the strawberry guava. That's baby food for the pigs. You guys know that. And not only that, native birds feed in the strawberry guava. Who knows that? Anybody know that? The native birds feed in the strawberry guava. How many are you going to kill from killing the strawberry guava? Like the banana, banana polka. You killed the banana polka with a fungus. So many native birds got killed. How come you guys don't get penalized with all of these punishments? Yeah, how come the law doesn't work for the DLNR? Who's policing the DLNR? That's what I'd like to know. Anyway, I'm really against all of this. I think this is mean and nasty and not a reflection of the wish of the public. <clears throat> okay, uh, next we have Ronald Fujiyoshi. Uh, my name is Ronald Fujiyoshi. And, not Ronald. and I, uh, I was a missionary in Asia for 20 years. And I came back in 1988, and the two big things that bothered me is the injustice against Hawaiians, beginning with the overthrow, and even up to now. And secondly, the destruction of what, what is Hawaii. Now, this is, I, I wasn't born here, but I married a Hilo girl, and so I've been living here since 57. Now, uh, my, my, my sense is, uh, I heard uh, the second in command of the civil defense on this island, and he said, if all the food stuff is stopped from coming to this <coughs> island, we only have seven days of food in, in, on this island. Now, to me, we need the game animals for people to, to, to live on, but it got to be managed. You know? <clears throat> and just this morning, uh, there was a committee meeting in the county council that talked about the Game Management Commission. For the first time in Hawaii, there is a Game Management Commission set up on this island. And we got to let them do their job. The job is you over-regulating. We need management. And so you got to give them balance to keep everything in balance. And who better than the people who live and grew up here? including the Hawaiian practitioners and the hunters, right? So here I feel, <coughs> since coming back, the conservationists are played off against the hunters, and so that to get federal money, 
all the game mammals are going to be fenced out or destroyed. Yeah? And so it's going to destroy the Hawaiian and I want. Yeah? So I think we should uh, have the state back off, let the Hawaii Island Game and Management Committee do its job, and then if they don't do their job, and then you oversee and see what's happening. But I don't think, I think uh, the people who know this island best are the people here, and they should set up a game management plan, including the Hawaiians, and then see where we go from there. But I think over-regulation is, is not the way to go. Thank you. Okay, uh, I, you're up now. Okay. Um, can you say your name? Oh, I wait. can ask one more question. Okay. Okay. I like you. You can read the abstract from the 23. This is what I got back for my tax money, and this is what all of us got for our tax money. Okay. So can you, sir, so, please read the abstract? Is that rel related specifically to the rule changes that we're proposing now? Pretty much. What? In what way? Very. The process is for us to collect the testimony from the public. They read the process. So if you can read this, that you can read it. I cannot. Yeah. Okay. So this was published by Ecological Applications 216, 2011. And uh, it's by the Ecological so Society of America, yeah? And in a nutshell, it says that where never have ungulates, it is all screwed up. We get the ungulates, it's fine. So, I mean, it kind of retains to what you say. Now we kind of transport the pigs, we kind of do all this kind of stuff, and you say that you like kill all these invasive animals, you know? And, you know, I just don't understand, like, why are we making more rules? And we paying taxes for these studies that uh, come out contradicting this, and this is straight from the feds. That's all I'm trying to say. Thank you. Um, hey, does anybody in the audience object if I go through this school? Let me go first. Go ahead. Let me speak back. My name is Wayne Matthews. I um, just want to speak for a minute or two on this. First of all, I'll open with. I just got short notice this, but I read through this one. Other people were talking. To me, this is just another step in the DLNR's process to totally eradicate every animal, ungulate as you like to call it, I guess scientifically call it, off the island, the island. So I oppose what I've read in here. Okay. Um, I watch the news on a regular basis, and every other night I see something about sustainability on the island. Sustainability, <coughs> talking about Hawaii imports, uh, 80 or 90% of its food products. Anybody got anything about that right about 80 or 90%? Of it? You know, it's a large, very, very large percentage. I know, because I work at the pier. And what, what the gentleman said is true, that if, and if the barges stop coming, we'll be in a famine on this island about five years. There's no doubt about it. Not required. Sustainability. Sustainability. Okay, so you're talking sustainability. Okay, and that's your own government. Okay, talking about sustainability. And then on the other side, we have people, and you know what? I'm just going to be very, very frank. We have people who have come here, like you, and you, and you, and I think you too down there. You guys aren't from, are you from Hawaii? You guys lived here your whole life, were you raised here? You guys come here, take a job, and you decide that, oh, yeah, there's a lot of sheep here, there's a lot of pigs, there's a lot of goats. But you think that you just want to come here and eradicate everything. If you're going to make everything good again, how it was 200 years ago, before the first white man stepped off the boat, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And we have, it's very complicated. It's layers here. There's, there's, there are people here. Right in this room, that I'm gonna tell you right now, if they don't hunt and they don't catch something, they're not gonna eat as well as they would last week when they caught something. You're talking about taking food off people's dinner table. Maybe I should come to your house, your house, and take your food off your table tonight, and you go hungry, or your kids go hungry. 
But this is, this is very complicated now. You know, you guys, you guys think you can just come in here and you can say, okay, we're going to eradicate the sheep on Mount Ikea for the Toledo bird. Yeah, it's, it's, it's way more than that. You know, there, there are people here. You're dealing with people. Okay. Now, what if, what if anybody who's lived here long enough, right? my old man used to tell me, right over here would know, during World War II, the barges stopped running to Hawaii because it was, we were in war. Now, there was a lot of people living off the land. Never have welfare checks, never have eat <coughs> so, so, uh, oh, we go down to the, we go down and we'll get whatever we need because they never even have food. Now, you lived off the land. That's all they had. Now our population is tripled, and you guys are eradicating whatever the food source on the mountain at an outrageous pace. Your, your eradication efforts are tripled. You guys are taking, like they said, you guys are taking like 80% of this island is a national national area reserve, national park, natural area reserve. You want to take away the game management areas. You know, where, if something happens, and not if, I should say when it happens, when it does happen that we are told that, oh, Young Brothers is not going to come here because the military is going to uh, send the food to Honolulu or something for the military, or they're afraid they're going to get their Manson ship got sank by a submarine out in, out in uh, on the middle of the Pacific. Where are we going to get our food from? Uh, is Parker Ranch going to open up? Parker Ranch going to say, oh, you know what? Oh, don't worry, brother. You, you know, you guys didn't buy meat from us for the last hundred years. Okay. After we rip off the Hawaiians for all their land. But you know what? Oh, go. You guys cannot shoot on college. They go, no, no way. The people are going to starve. You guys, you, guys, you guys speak with pork tongue in the government. On one side, you got one spokesman saying sustainability. On the other side, the guy saying eradicate everything. You guys are crazy. You guys, you know what? And you guys, like they say, it's heavy handed with you. What you're doing is wrong. This is not right at all. There are people, you're taking food off of people. And you guys, hey, guys, I know guys that in this division have told me, oh, what? The pigs have been here for 100 years at least. So have the sheep and the goats. This forest is still standing. That's true. Yeah, the forest gets degraded. But you know what? If you let the hunters go in and you go and let the hunters take care of it, because the hunters will eat it, the hunters will take care of the problem. We don't need no helicopter airborne hunts. We don't need that. You're wasting our money. What, how much? What is that? $800 an hour for a helicopter to fly for a whole week to shoot animals? Hey, take it out of your pocket. I pay fucking taxes on my ass. I don't want to fucking have to pay for a goddamn helicopter to shoot something that I can go shoot myself and feed my family with. That's crazy. You guys are, hey, you guys, you guys don't think straight. You guys went through too much school. You guys don't sit back and look at the whole picture. What is important? You guys just come here. Oh, huh? like they came 200 years ago. You know what? We, how did you came here? We discovered Hawaii. Oh, never mind the people here. We came in for the queen. And you know what? We're going to show you guys how to live. We're going to cut down all the sandalwood forests for export them. And we're going to bring cattle in. That's what they did. That's what you guys are doing now. You guys are coming back and saying, oh, you know what? You Hawaiians, you guys don't know how to live. You know what we're going to do? We're going to eradicate all the pigs because they're no good. Even though you guys have brought them here, and the cattle, and the sheep. And now we're going to show you guys how to live. How are you going to live? What are you going to do? Eat vegetables. Yeah, you guys, you guys are not thinking, bro. I tell you what, you guys, you think, you think you can just flip flop, flip flop, and this regulation and that regulation. You know, what, that's this, this is this is bad. This is bad. I don't know where you guys got this from, but you guys should go back and think <coughs> what you guys are doing. And I know, I know for a fact. But I told the guy that was over here. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna sit here and you listen to this. You make your report to Isla, and you guys are gonna continue with this. You continue with this. That's what you guys always do. Yeah, no, you continue. You guys continue. You guys want to eradicate. You eradicate. You guys, you guys should go eradicate you guys self because we never had you guys 40 years ago. And we was doing fine. Everybody was everybody was feeding themselves. The pigs are not monkey. I had plenty of pigs, but you know what? No worry, the pigs are taken care of by the hunters. You guys are the ones making a problem. Fencing in the place. Don't let anybody go in. You got Pokolo. Pokolo? I have a Pokolo. From 1970 till today. You know how many families got fed in Buffalo by the sheep that was in there? Right. Hundreds, if not 10,000 people, got fed by that sheep. Guys would go out there and bring home one sheep every weekend, and they would have barbecue and smoked meat and sausage and roast and stew. And the next weekend they go up and they shoot two more. They take the kids up there. The kids are going to the mountain, go sleep early. 
They wasn't playing Nintendo going down smoking ice on the street because they was going hunting the next day. You know, get the kids out of trouble. To come to the mountain, show them the right way to live. Not, not this kind of stuff you guys want to do. No, there's nothing up there. You go up there and guys just trying to kill each other because a few sheep is up there. That place would feed people for decades. For decades it fed people. Maybe you, you know, it's here. But I was here. I got fed by them. He probably got fed by them. You probably ate them. All you guys ate the fucking sheep off that mountain. What are you guys coming over here to care of food? Go back to where you came from. Go see where you came from. I don't ask you to come over here to save my place. I discovered this place. I was born here. I never come here. Oh, I discovered Hawaii. I'm going to save them. You're not going to save Hawaii. Hawaii is like this already. You need to worry about the sheep. What about urban sprawl? Why don't you go over there into the big, big uh, resorts that are taking up all these multi-million dollar uh, lands and say, oh, we're building mini ranchettes. What, it's urban spot? It destroys, it destroys the environment? Now the native birds or the native animals can't live there. Their lawnmowers cutting over the native plants that might be growing there. Right? Isn't that true? You're gonna tell me that urban sprawl is not destroying the environment. I'm asking you, yes or no? It's not urban sprawl, it's not urban sprawl. Urban sprawl, urban sprawl endangers the endangered species that are on your list, right? Excuse me, um. No, I'm just telling you. I just wanna ask that question. Answer what, you cannot answer. You cannot answer. You guys can't answer because you know it's the truth. Just like. The guy told me, Mauna Kea, the Palilu study, $16 million you guys had spent on them already. And what? Where the Palilu bird? Down. But yeah, where the whole money? If we would. Palilu bird, bro. No, okay. I'm going to finish, finish, finish up, bro. Okay. But you know what? Bro, you guys are blowing smoke up the wrong pipe. You guys are trying to eradicate stuff and do things. We was doing plenty before these environmentalist guys came here. You know what? You control them. Bro, we don't need you guys. You guys are wasting our time. You know what, when I see one hunting in the mountain, you know what I see? I see one guy walking in the mountain, he's up there, getting away from his job, we need some stress, so you go home and kill his boss with his old lady. Yeah. Right? No <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I see one guy that came here from somewhere, went to school, and went up there, he's over to my unit. Oh, there's a plan. I'm gonna go get a $10 million grant to study for 10 years. You guys sucking the blood out of us. I thought I pay tax for you guys, for guys like you. What about I give to the Iranians? You guys don't do me nothing. You guys don't. You guys is like, you guys is rubbish to me, bro. You guys is rubbish. You guys, you guys, you sucking the blood out of this state because you make it impossible for the people to live here even, we can't even do business here because all oh, the environmental regulation. Hey, bro, go home. Go back to where you came from. I pop. Okay. Um, there you go. Listen, um, you know, I noticed there's, this is a, a, a topic for you guys, and you guys have a lot of emotion invested in it. But if you can please direct the comments to the department or to me. That would be appreciated. We're, we're all here just doing a job. So, you know, we're here representing the division. If we can keep it. You know, cordial and and um and keep keep your comments directed to the subject matter and to the department. Thank you. Uh, okay. Great. Does anybody object? Um, if I take the time to go through this whole thing, the last point that I should point out. Hey, I see. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Stephen Arouge. Um, if we go to um, the page that Mark, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Division of Forest and Wildlife. Okay, what I did is I numbered my pages because you guys didn't put numbers on a page. I numbered mine. Okay, number one, page one. Okay, uh, over here uh, in the summary. It says title of chapter is amended in the office of the word is and are, are updated, are amended. Okay, um, by right, none of this is amended unless you guys passed it already. Okay, this is as proposed. Okay, number one. Okay, now we go to page two. Okay, page two. Uh, on the top it says indigenous wildlife, endangered threatened wildlife, and adding in indigenous wildlife. And you're crossing out uh, the term over here, wild birds, and you're adding wildlife, right? Okay, so um, in doing that, aren't you supposed to change the material that refers to it? Aren't you supposed to change the definition 
they refer to what we scratch out. So in other words, if we scratch out wild birds with a title, right? You can hear me? Yeah. Okay. If you're scratching out wild birds in a title, then on page four, you would have to scratch out the term over there. Introduce wild birds. Okay. You would have to scratch the whole thing over there. Okay? So uh, now if you go on to page page four. Okay, where it says it uh injurious wildlife. That is a new addition, right? Uh, it says, injurious wildlife means any species or subspecies of animal, scratching game mammals and birds, except for specified otherwise by rule or permitted by the Department of Agriculture as conditionally approved. Okay, the Department of Agriculture, this, this is not the jurisdiction of the Department of Agriculture. This is the jurisdiction of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. So you cannot take the fiduciary responsibility and uh, dump it on another department. This is your fiduciary responsibility. So by right, where it says, except for a specified otherwise by rule of permitted by the Department of Agriculture as conditional approved, that should not be added. That should be totally deleted. And just for our clarification purposes and for trust, okay, because honestly, I don't trust you guys. Um, where it says, don't do not take out the term except gay birds and gay mammals. Leave it in. Okay? Because you, you will find out when I reach a back page, but I tell you what. Okay? Um, over here, where it says over here, um, the next one, introduce. Introduce means an act of releasing wildlife into a habitat to which it is not indigenous. Okay. Um, actually, yeah. It kind of like doesn't make sense because, um, for one, if you take the palila and you introduce it to Kona, um, let's say um, the Kahuku area, okay, it's not an indigenous area. It's degraded. Okay, so you guys really need to go back and really look at that um, to the meaning of the word introduce. I hope you guys get in this. But I, I took hours on this. Okay, if you go to page page five. Uh, on the top it says and is updated, which is located at the end of this chapter and uh, incorporated by reference. And it goes over here, except for uh, specified by the by the Department of Agriculture uh, as conditionally approved. Okay, you see by the word reference. There's a bracket there. Yeah? Looking by the word reference, you got any bracket. Where's the first bracket? I cannot find the first bracket, so what are we doing? If, if this is a typo, fix it. Um, and we bring it to a further note, yeah? In the front, you guys are supposed to uh, put what you guys are doing. In other words, like, stack summary material, bracket it, and with the line tool, meaning being deleted. Underscore, meaning being Put in. You guys gotta let the public know what to do. But third or fourth grade are supposed to be able to look at this and know what is being done here. Um, okay, so, uh, the word introduced wildlife means any wildlife introduced or imported to Hawaii by humans. Okay, and you take it out and leave it in a wild and undomesticated state. If you read that and you go back to the word introduced, there's a conflict in the meaning. Uh, so that needs to be fixed or get rid of the, uh, the term for introduced and keep this. Okay? Um, now, if you go down one more, it says the word release. Okay, this is a new phrase, right? The adding release means to free an animal from effective confinement or restraint. Okay. You need to take out the word animal because you can lease a palila. You can release a nene. So the term is not animal. The term animal should be deleted and you add the term uh, something like a certain species. Okay, now you found everything, right? Okay, I'm hoping you guys get off the hook in all that. 
we were told over a decade, okay? So, uh, <coughs> in, the, in the forest, they destroy them, yeah. So, by removing this, you're not going to give anybody any le um, leverage to say the gay mammals are um, injurious animals to the native plant, so we got to kill them all, okay? Um, when you go down to five, it says, when species are introduced, wildlife are introduced, wildlife are found to be generally harmful or destructive to agriculture, uh, constituting a human threat. Again, this is redundant. You just said it about it. It's written about it. Um, so, you know, you guys got to remove that, yeah, because it's redundant. Yeah, you want to say the same thing twice. Um, Okay, you know, down here, uh, on the bottom of page nine, where there's a uh, permit to destroy indigenous wildlife. <coughs> okay, you got that. Okay, but should be added somewhere in there in some kind of context. Um, the destruction of indigenous species, yeah, shall not be, um, be enough I don't know how you would say it, but it should not be enough to put the species in peril or become threatened or endangered. So now there is only so much you can kill before the guy totally stop in haze or whatever. Or in like that to be um, added so that our species don't go uh, in peril. Okay, let's go to page 10. Um, I was kind of doing this late last night, but um, I don't know if you guys are actually getting rid of compliance with all laws in per, um, compliance with all laws, 13, 1.4, 7.2. Because I don't see it on the bottom. <coughs> so if you guys are actually dumping it, I suggest you pull them back because all rules shall be in uh, conjunction with all laws. Okay? Also, the severability um, for this section should also stay. Because rules are several, they are not permanent. Okay, so those those two items need to stay also. Uh, at the bottom of page twelve, um, where it says scientific propagation and educational permit permit for collecting, possessing, feeding, selling, or offering for sale, selling or offering for sale of our wildlife, um, and this is. Specifically, on the sub chapter three, endangered and threatened wildlife. <coughs> that should be deleted. Because our um, threatened and endangered species should not be sold or, or traded. Because by doing that, what's going to happen is they're going to become more threatened. And it's going to take longer to recover. So now again, we go back to fiduciary responsibility. It is the department's responsibility not to let this happen. Okay? Um, let's go to. Oh, yeah, this is. Um, this is the um, signed by the uh, Deputy Attorney General, approved for public hearing. You guys have only had the Deputy Attorney General's name printed on the job. So we know who signed this paper. So if you know, um, like I was saying earlier, you want to chase somebody, they don't mean. Okay? Um, all legal documents are supposed to be written that way. Um, okay, uh, now let's go 15. We are on the uh, list, of, list of species of endangered wildlife in Hawaii. I'd like to ask you guys a question. I need to know the answer for the testimony. Yeah? You got all of these lists of all of these birds. Okay, how many actually family this? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm assuming a majority of them are uh, what we base our list off of. Okay, uh, and over here you got portion, portion of brain for in danger. Uh, the petrol. Okay, uh, the Galapagos petrol. Okay, <coughs> documentation proves that both petrols. Not only nest on the main Hawaiian Islands, but also nest on the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, also on the Galapagos Islands. 
also in South America. Our greeting artists, greeting and uh, we designate because uh, the hawk, okay, here's a good one. The hawk is a uh, um, endangered bird and its uh, range is uh, uh, very endangered is the entire place. The hawk is supposed to be delisted, it's up for delisting by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is saying it's no longer endangered. Why is it here? So that means it is not endangered in its entire range, also. Okay, so uh, you guys gotta go back uh, and redo this thing. Okay? Um, the Allah. It's a good one, the Alala. I believe that um, the Alala was written off by the state of Hawaii, which means the state of Hawaii acknowledges that that bird no longer lives in the wild and it'll possibly go extinct. Why is it here? I believe that the New York species of Alala so is not a new species of the bird. So, again, go over this whole thing. Okay? Uh, we go on page 17. Uh, okay, same thing. Now, if you go down to um, okay, I'm um, on the list of um, ancient birds. Um, you know, you gotta get the doctor's stuff, right? Um, get that. Uh, I'm still around now. Great. Um, real fast. Yeah. We're up a lot of time. I just want to make sure there's nobody else that wants to testify. We have about 10 minutes left. So I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity before you continue. So if anybody else that wants to testify, please do so at this point. I got one question before Stephen continues. I understand this meeting is talking about airborne eradication. Is that correct or not? Uh, I don't believe that we're talking about the Because I was in the paper, they were talking about the topic of the No, it's not, it doesn't specifically refer to that. Where is he? Oh, okay. Wait, wait anybody else? Uh, comments or tes testimony? Me. Okay, you got you have 10 minutes, and then I gotta wrap it up. Yeah? About two, three more. Okay. Page 22. Um, you guys have got over here a list of the TPS wildlife in Hawaii. It says mallards, dogs, and pigeons. Keep mallards in mind, yeah? Um, and then it goes on to old warblers, old world flycatchers, old world warblers. Uh, okay. Um, personally, I don't think anybody sees uh, these easier wildlife. I think the only reason that the mallards, the old world flycatchers, and the old world warblers are on this list is because the mallard is genetically capable of crossing the Hawaiian duck. So now it's a threat. Okay? Um, and it also <coughs> migratory. It comes here on its own. So again, they call it indigenous species according to this, right? So in other words, if it does happen, you can't do anything about it. Because as nature, nobody bothers. Okay? Now, the overall Overall flight catches and over bobbers. Okay, they are also <coughs> genetically capable of crossing with our native birds. That is why they're on this list. Okay, uh, other than that, besides being genetically capable of crossing with the native birds, they're no threat. Okay. Even the white eye. So uh, each individual species needs to be looked at not only as harmful but how much beneficial. The so manjiro. Actually, it helps the farmer because it's the only bird that eats white fly. He, he eats the white fly, where the white fly is getting immune to pesticide. Okay. Um, oh, also, uh, you know, in the uh, getting rid of the nuisance animals, yeah, you guys talk about pesticide. Okay, um, I forgot what page, but it's crossing my mind right now while I talk to you. The use poison to kill any kind of animal is illegal in the state of Hawaii. And the only poison that actually kills an animal is one, uh, uh, tarpon. Okay? Uh, they call it the Matsu now. Okay? It's a registered Uganda gate permit to buy. Also, the second one is called Kampong Plenary. 
that the compound ten eighty is illegal to be manufactured, used, distributed, or possessed in the United States of America. So you better not be no ten eighty around. Uh, now we come to um, the uh, small little <coughs> bug and stuff. Uh, invertebrates. Okay. Um, you got the varona mite, exactly about it. You got the coffee bearer borer. Um, I said yes. You add on the five spotted, uh, the five spotted wing uh, makes up or what? But something to that effect. Okay. This is a bug <coughs> that was uh, being researched on Hawaii Volcano National Park years ago. The researcher lost his money. So in terms of retaliation, he opened the door and he let them all go. That bug is now infesting the National Park and it also is outside the National Park now into like Volcano Village um, that um, a lot of uh, Hawaiian states are that up there. And that bug is spraying, it is actually Killing all their trees. Now that is an injurious insect. So you got all to be to look at that. Um, and on mammals, <laughs> um, if you're looking at even tall ungulates, uh, just cut them out, light them out. What is the even tall ungulate? Um, what are you considering? Camel, giraffes, uh, antelope, light them out. Okay? Um, and uh, keep, keep the terminology, except for gay mammals. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, is there anybody who has any additional questions or would like to give additional testimony? I want to know, you have a hearing here. So what's the next step now? Are you just going to push it through anyway or what? <coughs> Uh, the next step in the process is we're going to go to all the items and then we're going to analyze all the comments and take all the comments and see. So what is that going to be? Like the last time I was sitting here, went to the meeting for the 122-123 uh, rewrite. And that was uh, 19... Or what? Three years going by, Scott Price still hasn't come out with the... With the supposed to be red next month. So what, what, are we, what are we waiting on? Three years? You're going to wait until us forget about it and push it through as it is? Uh, that's not the plan for this process. Or once it, once we're finished with the meeting, we do have to go through that to the collection of testimony and then to actually oh, present that. the rules. So we have I, I, I a better plan. I understand what I'm saying is, uh, you guys tried to do a quick and dirty rewrite of the hunting regulation three years ago. You dropped, you dropped a bomb on us um, right before Thanksgiving, and you gave us ten days to respond to your sweeping changes. I, have to, I have to actually have to go ask myself. We asked for an extension for the response. We got a response. Now, that's three years down the road. And we still haven't seen the rewrite of that. So what? What's going to happen with this now? You're going to, you're going to hopefully, uh, after, after so many years, you're going to push it through without when you forgot about it? Or we're fighting something else? Because that's what it's like. Like I said, I'm completely opposed to this. Because all this is is another step in your in your lockstep march by full eradication of our food source. That's all it is. So you're gonna listen to me. That's why that's why they put you here because they wanted to put a local boy there so that we wouldn't be too harsh on you, right? But the, the fact of it is, you guys are gonna push this through. So it's gonna happen. So I want to know when. What is the next step? Because somebody has to be accountable because the public here, I think I only heard one person over there, that guy, saying he agrees with it. Everyone else here is a, so I would say 99.99% disagree with almost every document you have, that almost every letter on that page. So I'm willing to bet that Kona was the same way too. And I bet, I bet if you go to the other hand, you're going to get the same thing. So if the people are opposed to it, what are you going to do? You're going to push it through anyway? Yeah, but I want somebody to be responsible for it. Because you know what? You guys are paid by me. I pay you. He pays you. In my tax, in my license, in my ammunition, in my arrows, I pay my money in tax to pay your paycheck. And it ain't for you to cut my throat. 
and take food off my table. Okay? You should be responsible for the wood. I don't know what the hell rope is, but if it was here right now, I'd, I'd give them help. Okay? I don't want this to go through, and I want to make sure it doesn't go through. This should be tabled right now. You go to your meetings and pray because we don't need this. Like I said earlier, we don't need what you're trying to do. We don't need this. You're only wasting money. That's what you do. You're wasting more money. You're going to spend eight, seven, eight hundred dollars an hour flying around shooting sheep that guys are willing to pay gas and buy ammunition. It should be more tax money for you to pay your paycheck to do it for free for you and me. You guys, hey, so I want to know what's the next step. Because I've been following the 122, 123 year right. Scott Fretz knows my name. And I've been calling him at when's your rewrite? Because I want to see the rewrite before it gets voted on the board. Oh, we don't know, we don't know. That's bullshit. You guys fucking know. You guys supposed to let us know when it's coming through. Okay? You work for us. You don't work for the Nation Conservancy or the Sierra Club. You work for the state of Hawaii, the people in the state of Hawaii. Okay? I pay your paycheck. I'm the guy. He pays. He pays. He goes to work every day. Fucking stands there. He pays. He goes to work. Okay? We are actually your bosses. We're the guys that the money comes from. And we want to know what are you going to do. Because like I said, I'm waiting for a response from the last one three years ago. I haven't got that yet. What am I going to get out? What am I going to get out? I'll email from money. Oh, they passed the regulation. Word for word. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the last one we went to, we weren't happy with that either. I say 90% of the people that attend the meeting, we're not happy with what you guys are trying to pass. Okay? We're not happy with what you guys are trying to pass now. You're not great. But I want to know who's going to be responsible. I will be calling to find out about this. I will be chasing you guys down. I will. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other testimony before we wrap this up? Okay. Uh, right there. You got a question right there. Oh, sorry. Real quick. Steve Burton with Big Island and Bird Hunters. Damage has not been defined. It necessarily should be done. And where you have uh, introduced birds or transported, Canada geese need to be accepted from that because they're migrating on their own. We have them here on the big island that should be listed. Thank you. Okay. Um, you can't do anything with the geese. Are the geese protected under the Migratory Bird Act? Isn't it, isn't it a protected species? I mean, we can't we can shoot geese in Hawaii. So why should you be allowed to shoot geese when they come here naturally? <laughs> why should you shoot them out to mallards? Yeah, I know about the mallards breeding with the koala. You guys, that's what I tell you, you guys, you guys, are, you guys can twist the rules all you like, but you guys need to be held responsible for what you guys are doing. Okay, thank you. Um, it's it's now eight o'clock. Um, so let's move forward towards adjournment. Um, so as far as the decision making information, after considering your comments and other testimonies, and it should be decided to go ahead without, with or without changes, the division will submit the proposed administrative rules to the Board of Land and Natural Resources for adoption with recommendation. Should the board decide to adopt the proposed amendments to the administrative rules, we will send the rules to the Department of the Attorney General for legal review. After this department approval, the division will send the rules to the governor for final approval and signature. If approved as described, the division will file certified copies with the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. Ten days after filing, the administrative rules will become effective and have the force effect of the law. Question. On behalf of the Board of Land and Natural Resources and the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, thank you for attending the public hearing. The public hearing is adjourned at 8.01. Please drive in the Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Good job, Wayne. Fuck yeah.